Hey, retro tech friends, and welcome to another edition of Dave's Retro Video Lab, the show where we check out old video gear from yesteryear. Today in the lab, we are going to dabble with some old school, over the air analog video transmission, and we're going to do that with this little gizmo. It's essentially a pocket TV transmitter I purchased on eBay for just over 100 US dollars. What we have here is a 50 milliwatt analog TV transmitter made by a company called HLLY Electronics. And in a few moments, I will test out these old analog TVs to see if they can still pull in an over the air TV signal with this little box. The HLLY Electronics TVX50M is a 50 milliwatt UHF and VHF TV transmitter, which has programmable frequencies, which you can select with these three buttons on the face of the transmitter. It has a single composite video input along with a single channel RCA audio input as well. According to the manufacturer, the TVX50M has a direct line of sight range of about 50 meters, which we will test out later in the show. For my video source, I have a Sony SL300 Super Beta deck playing Star Wars. Yes, Star Wars on Beta. Actually, I have the entire Star Wars original trilogy on Beta. How cool is that? Okay, I'm gonna stop the show right here for just a moment and point something out. If you take a closer look, the beta cassette box looks just like a VHS box and that's because it is. To save some money, CBS Fox put a beta sticker on the side of the VHS box and then put a cardboard insert at the top of the box so the shorter beta cassette would not slide around inside the longer VHS cassette box. Okay, so let's test out this little transmitter to see if we can start broadcasting. To save some time, I have already plugged in my Super Beta VCR's audio and video outputs to the transmitter's AV inputs. I've attached the transmitter's antenna already, so we should just be about ready to go. So all I have to do now is turn on the transmitter, and you will notice on the LCD display, the transmitter shows uh, the channels in megahertz and not by the old school channel numbers which we're all familiar with. So I had to go online and download a chart which translates a given frequency to a recognizable channel number. For example, if I look here on the chart, channel 29's analog video is located on the UHF frequency spectrum at 561.25 megahertz. So in theory, I should be able to tune the transmitter to this frequency, turn on the TVs, dial them into channel 29, and we should see Star Wars. <laughs> Okay, let's dial in 561.25 megahertz into the box here uh, to see if we can actually get a picture on these TVs. So, from what I understand, the shift button cycles through each one of the numbers and set will change the value. So, if I hit this, all right, well that's already at one, so that's good. This is at 25, that's good, or 0.25. Uh, this is at 4.5, which I believe is the number we need for the audio. And now we have to change this value, which has to be 5. So I'll go to the set button here, and I'll keep pressing it until I get to 5. Okay, so I will hit confirm, and I think that sets me up. Now that I've dialed in the frequency to what I think is channel 29, it's time to tune in our little TV here and the other TVs to see if we can see Star Wars. So the channel's 29, right? So I will put this on UHF, that's good. And then simply I will start tuning. Uh-oh, <laughs> wait a minute. Hold on, it's there, oh, it's right in there somewhere. Ooh, maybe it's because I have to rotate. Oh, you know what it is, I gotta rotate. Oh, it's, it's, it's so there. Well, I tried to dial in channel 29 here and interestingly enough, when I dial up to a higher frequency, 
like channel 30, I kind of get Star Wars. Now, it could be the antenna, may not be set up right. It's, it's like so close. So what I'm gonna do, I mean, it's right, right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop down for a minute and figure out if it's an antenna problem or if it's a TV problem. We'll be right back. Okay, so uh, typical of any experiment we conduct here in the lab, nothing ever goes as planned. Uh, and once again, we had another issue. So uh, as it turns out, we dialed in 561.25 uh, into our transmitter and uh, we tuned the TVs into channel 29 and saw nothing. <laughs> Which, well, I sort of was expecting that, but uh, we were kind of getting something, so we were kind of, uh, well, thought we might be onto something. So, what we started doing was we took the transmitter here and started plugging in different values to see if anything would come up on our TVs as we kept scanning through their uh, the UHF frequency range. And amazingly enough, uh, at 531.25, which I think is in the Channel 24 neighborhood, we got this. Star Wars, everybody. We got Star Wars. I think it's on channel 24. Let's listen to the audio. Wait, wait for it. Woohoo! We got Red 5 standing by. Perfect. So, Amazingly enough, uh, our little TV transmitter here does indeed work, and we were able to pick up Star Wars, uh, we think on channel 24, on all of these TVs, even our big old Sony Trinitron here from 1976. This is absolutely amazing. Um, I really think this is neat. I've always wanted to see these TVs come back to life, especially this little Panasonic up here. It is such a cool little set, and there was no way to get video uh, to to watch video on it unless uh, it picked up an over-the-air signal. So that is so, so cool. It's so neat to see these things come to life again. I can't believe it. Okay, everybody, we are here at our test range where we are going to uh, check out the HLLY transmitter to see if indeed it can broadcast the 50 meters they claim it can. Uh, by the way, 50 meters is 164 feet, so we have put a cone all the way out at 164 feet uh, as sort of where we will take uh, our measurements from. Now, you're probably wondering, well, Dave, how are you going to do this? Everything is back at the lab. Wrong! Guess what? We brought the lab with us. Look at that, everybody. We've got the Sony Super Beta deck, the Star Wars Beta tape, the transmitter. We even have a battery to power this whole mess. Plus, we brought our little Sony Watchman, which we are going to use to conduct this test. And um, interestingly enough it's getting ready to start to rain so we got to hurry this up so i'm going to turn all this stuff on and we're going to go ahead and see if this thing works first we're going to turn the deck on we'll grab the tape slide it into the deck wait for it to thread then press play next we'll turn on the transmitter then we will dial in star wars on channel 24 on our small portable sony television Okay, now it's time to test to see if the 50 meters or 164 feet the manufacturer claims the transmitter can broadcast will actually indeed work. For some reason, I ran the whole distance to our cone, and then I tried to dial in Star Wars, and this happened. We're experiencing technical difficulties. Please stand by. Unfortunately, the battery we brought to power our electronics was not strong enough to supply enough power to our Sony Super Beta deck for more than maybe 15 minutes, and it died midway through our test. So we had to stop down and return to the lab, but I wasn't going to give up, however. Hey, 
I ordered a more powerful battery on Amazon, and a week later, we returned to an alternate test site so we could complete our research. Retro 1 was in the shop getting essentially new everything, so we brought Retro 2 instead. Just like before, we set up our test equipment, placed our measurement cone at 50 meters from our transmission site, plugged in the antenna, fired up the Super Beta deck, and played Star Wars through the HLLY TVX 50M TV transmitter. The manufacturer said the TVX 50M's line of sight range is 164 feet or 50 meters. However, we were unable to receive a signal at that distance. We eventually did pick up a signal at 100 feet or just over 30 meters. Just for the record, we did try to adjust the transmitter's antenna while conducting these tests, but the results were always the same. Before I close the show, I have a special note to share with everyone out there on the internet who is a fan of this channel. Just the other day, we reached 2,000 subscribers. Now, I know that doesn't sound like a lot. Most would even say that's kind of lame, but I don't care. When I started this channel four years ago, I thought I might be lucky enough to maybe interest a handful of you in joining me as I check out all this old video gear. Well, four years later, I'm still tooling along with my crazy crew and all of you, and I want to thank everyone for their support. I also want to send out a special shout out to Ruben, who was our first subscriber, and he's a huge fan of the channel still, and we can't thank Ruben enough for his support. That wraps up another edition of our show. Until next time, take care, everyone, and thanks for watching.